Alright, what's happening everyone? Welcome back. In this video we're going to be looking at Svelte, which is the last framework that we're going to be looking at in this series. If you haven't seen the last video on Bit, check that one out. Really, really cool component library. So far in this series we've looked at a bunch of different frameworks. We've looked at Lit Element, we've looked at Angular Elements, we've looked at Stencil, we've looked at Bit, and now we're going to look at Svelte. And then in the next video, we're going to sum up all our thoughts. We're going to make some predictions about where web components are going over the next 12 to 18 months. And uh, we'll look at a Reddit question that I opened up about what others think of web components. So as always, if you like this series, if you're interested in this, if you want me to make more videos like this, hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notifications button and comment down below and let me know what other frameworks you want me to look at. So Svelte allows you to create cybernetically enhanced web apps. So the three main points that they say about themselves is it allows you to write less code. So I guess it's adding the boilerplate in there for you. There's no virtual DOM. Svelte compiles your code to tiny frameworkless vanilla JavaScript so that your app starts fast and stays fast and is truly reactive. So there's no more complex state management libraries like React or Angular. Svelte brings re reactivity to JavaScript itself. All right, those are big claims. Well, let's carry on down and see how it does all of this. What I am inferring is that it's more like a CLI that compiles your code down uh, rather than just in time compilation in your browser. It's really interesting how technology changes. So over time, you know, you'll go through phases where, where uh, it sounds like a good idea to compile your code. And then as things evolve, you know, new technologies come out, browsers get faster. Uh, we start doing all this complicated diffing within the browser and we go that route. And now what it looks like with Svelte is we're taking that loop all the way back to the beginning where we've gone back to compilers. So sometimes things work, sometimes things don't, sometimes old ideas are updated. And uh, I mean, the lesson to learn here is in some cases, if it's not broken, you don't need to fix it. In one of my first videos, when I was looking at Lit Element, one thing that I really liked about it was that they had an in-browser code editor that allowed you to do everything on their website themselves and try in real time. And I see that Svelte has taken on this approach as well, and it looks really, really nice. So here on their homepage, as you're going down, each one of these points has an example next to it that you can change. And you can see the result. You can see the JS output over here. So this is what the compiler is outputting. And you can see the CSS output as well. That's, that's really, really useful. I really love that. So let's dive into the tutorial. One thing that I find really interesting is they're not directly referring to web components. They are presenting it as their own type of component, similar to React or Angular. One really interesting thing that they're pointing out here is that they have accessibility warnings built right in. So over here, the image tag should have an alt attribute. So alt equals a man dances. And there you go, now it's gone. look at the JS output it is slightly minified output but we can see here if change.count so this P method is getting called with the changed attributes and the context and if we're finding that count has changed there's a set data method that gets called and it updates the new value of count 
And then over here, this is what it's compiled our handle click method into. And it's got this invalidate method here. And it's invalidating the variable name, which is count. And then it is updating, I guess here, uh, to the new value. So up here, it's creating the element and it's setting it up. So this is this is the button here. It's got a listen method on button uh, for the click event. And this is the, the method that gets called every time the button is clicked. And so every time that happens, it's just invalidating the current value, which tells it to update that value. That's really cool. So as I'm going through this tutorial, I wondered how long it actually is. And it looks like it's really, really in depth going through events, bindings, uh, the life cycle, the stores, uh, some animations and transitions. And this, this library is really robust. There's a, a context API here, similar to, I guess, React special elements so if you need to reference a window if you need to reference the header sharing code it talks about exports i mean i think i'm gonna do a uh, a bigger in-depth series on spout because it seems really cool so far it's really intuitive it's basically vanilla javascript i like how clean the JS output is and open the black box and follow along rather than assuming it's just magic. Let's do what we've been doing in all the other reviews and try and recreate our progress bar component in this framework. What we're gonna do is rather than loading it locally, I'm just gonna use their online editor and see how far I can get here. So first thing, I'm just gonna copy in my existing element. Uh, I'm just using the lit element example and I'm just gonna change it up a little bit and see how far I can get with this. Well, that took literally no effort at all. I am so shocked how simple it was. I literally have been using this framework for about 20 minutes, gone through like a third of the tutorial, and here I am with my completed progress bar component. 
I am so shocked and amazed. All right, so just to show you guys what I have done here. So I created a progress bar component. I have exposed a prop here called complete and that will let us, when we create the component, just set that as an attribute. You do that using the export statement here. I have set some styling and then here is the actual HTML and all I've got is a style tag on the inner progress bar div that just updates based on that complete prop. When we get to the main app component, we are importing the progress bar component here and we're setting a variable called complete over here. This is our interval method and literally all it's doing is every 100 milliseconds is incrementing complete by one and then stopping it when it reaches 100 and clearing the interval and we're just passing that as a property in our progress bar component and it's literally that's it there was nothing else to it we can see it's working so if i change something there we go we can see it updating there in real time Everything looks good. Barely 28 lines of code. Most of it is the styling. When we look at the output here, let's make this a bit bigger. Here we can see it's creating the elements, the progress bar elements here. The only change detection we've got is on the complete attribute and so we can see that there's a new method here that we haven't seen set style on that div for the width and we're setting it to complete. We've got our invalidate method here and in 73 lines of code, we are creating and outputting our component. We can see that the CSS is there as well. Minified, optimized. I have to say this is probably one of my favorite experiences. It was gonna be a hard one to beat Stencil because I really enjoyed using TypeScript, but I mean, we just saw how easy it was to create this component in Svelte and how few lines of code it's compiled down to. Let's have a look at the API documentation. One negative here that I can see is the document is a work in progress. Please forgive any misleading or missing parts, but they do have a Discord chat room. <laughs> the tutorial is definitely very complete, um, but it does look like they go pretty in depth with everything here. Let's have a look at the Discord chat room. So it looks like there's 576 members online, there's 8,700 members in general. Pretty active community there. And yeah, people are talking. I love that here you can actually save. So we've lost our component, but we could have saved it by logging in and I can see that people are actually using that to share their code, share their examples when they ask for help. So this is something someone else has created. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do a deeper video series on Svelte and see how far we can push it, maybe create a full project on it and see where we go from there. Uh, I'm looking forward to going back over this last series and re-reviewing everything and, and uh, stacking everything up against each other. It looks like the state of web components is looking really good. I mean, these libraries, these frameworks aren't talked about too much in the mainstream, but there is a lot of value here. There's a lot of cool things going on and it's always fun picking up a new framework and a new library and learning something new. And I'm glad to see that there's so much competition for the big frameworks like Angular and React. I am going to keep on looking and as I find more frameworks, I'll continue this series. I'll continue 
are messing around and recreating our component in these different things in these different frameworks and just see where we can go from there. I've had a lot of fun making this video. Again, if you have enjoyed it, hit that like button, comment below, tell me what you liked about Svelte, tell me if you've used it before yourself and what you thought of it. And I'll see you next time.